Hey guys, I'm Merrick and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about the Speedy 25 Bandolier and I'm going to give you my three year overview, wear and tear update, do I still think this bag is worth the money, and just some additional points of review after I've used it for travel and then used it every day. So if you're interested in knowing my new updated thoughts on this bag, then keep on watching. Now, if you've been following my channel already, you'll know that one of my first, or actually my very first YouTube video ever was my review of the Speedy 25 Bandolier. So if you haven't seen that video, then you should check it out. I will say it was my first video ever, so um, I hope my videos have improved since then. But um, that video was a good overview of the bag in general, how it comes, all of the specs of it. So I'll just kind of go over a little bit um, of those specs now. So this is the Speedy 25 Bandolier in the Damiera Ben canvas with um, treated leather handles. And then it comes with a detachable strap because it is the Bandolier version. So it comes with three separate parts. You can do a shoulder bag or you can um, attach this third piece to do crossbody. Now, initially when I first got the bag, I actually always had this strap attached and I used it crossbody all the time. Since using it for a few years, I actually have detached that strap and I only bring it with me if I'm traveling and I want to have that crossbody hands-free option. But for the most part, I actually use it just with the two straps together as a shoulder bag. So I'll, I will also post modeling shots at the end of this video to demonstrate how I carry the bag and then how it looks on my frame. Um, for reference, I'm about five foot three inches, five foot four inches. Um, so back to the bag, put this in here. So back to the bag, this is a coated canvas, so it is very durable, and then a treated leather. So this is going to be different than your standard Vaquetta leather that comes with the Louis Vuitton monogram pieces, where that is at risk of getting fingerprints, water spots, because it's untreated, typically untreated. Now some of the newer bags have already treated Vaquetta, but this one is going to be treated um, with this you know, brown coating. So this is, I mean, basically indestructible. After using it for three years, carrying it, traveling, using hand lotion, I don't see any marks, any scratches, no, you know, really hardly any wear and tear at all on the handles. The handles have been great and I frequently carry this bag as a top handle bag or I'll even put it at the crook of my arm. So for all the use that it gets, this is looking really, really good. The coated canvas is fantastic. It's held up so well. There's, I mean, you can, you just can't see wear and tear at all. There's no feet on the bottom. So this will, every time you set it down, it will be on the hard surface, the floor, the table, the chair, wherever you are. And for not having feet, not having anything, I mean, I'll insert close-ups of my bag, but this has held up very, very well. Um, there are some spots on the side with the um, leather strips that have a little bit of bubbling, um, or I guess, um, you know, the, I don't even know what you call that. It just looks a little creased. Um, and I think that's just from the way that I carry it. I'm guessing it's only on this one side. I don't see it on this side, but I do see it on the strap where it's bent on my arm um, for the most popular way that I carry it. So other than that, for the bag um, itself, it's held up really, really nicely. Now the hardware is a little bit of a different story. I mean, hardware is hardware. If you're using the bag, it's gonna be you know, you're gonna see wear and tear. So there's definitely scratches, some chunks of gold missing on the zipper pulls um, of the gold coating, I guess. And then I'd say the zipper itself is a little bit discolored. If you look at it, it looks slightly darker than the actual zipper. Um, and there's definitely nicks and scratches on these um, little parts of the strap here. Um, and the D-ring from snapping and unsnapping off the handle. So the hardware definitely shows signs of wear and tear. Um, for me personally, that doesn't bother me at all because I'm using the bag and I'm not, you know, closely inspecting the hardware. But if you want a pristine bag, then, I mean, you're definitely going to have signs of wear and tear. Now, I will say I have a different Louis Vuitton bag that is not a canvas bag. There's some canvas on it, but there is also leather. And the zipper and the zipper poles... Um, seem to be better quality. So I don't know if it's a canvas bag, if Louis Vuitton doesn't use as nice of materials because the price point's lower, I'm not sure. But um, my other bag has fared a lot better and that one's older. So not quite sure about that. 
Um, but this bag, and as you can see when I'm holding it, it's just collapsing on itself because it's empty right now and there's absolutely no structure to this bag if it's empty. If you put some heavy stuff, minimal heavy stuff, then you will get a bottom sag. For me, I don't mind that. I actually like how that looks, so I don't use my bag shaper in here unless I'm going to store my bag for a long period of time. Um, if you watch my first review video, you'll see whenever you actually get this bag, it's folded up completely from the box. So you do have to use, have to take some time for those creases to come out. And after three years, you know, I would say those creases on my bag are completely gone. But overall wear and tear, the hardware definitely looks t worn, but otherwise the leather and the canvas are still in nearly perfect condition. Okay, now let's talk about using this bag for everyday use and travel. Do I still like it? Am I still using it? Do I think it's still cute? The answer to all of those things is yes. I still absolutely love using this bag. I do have other bags that I use on a rotation, so this isn't the exclusive bag that I use. However, if I need to carry a lot of things and still have a somewhat small bag, this is by far the best carrying capacity of any of my everyday bags that I have. This thing is deceivingly, deceivingly spacious. Now, um, I in my first video, I do talk about how one of the most common complaints about this bag is the opening, because the zipper opening, since it doesn't continue down the sides like the new Speedies um, that are made of leather, I think those actually, the, the zipper goes down, so you have a way bigger opening. This one, it, you're kind of limited by that. Now, you're not really that limited because you just put something in and then you tilt it sideways and it goes in just fine. But if you're reaching out, reaching out, um, sometimes, you know, you could, I guess, get scratched by the zipper if you're not being careful. But after using this for three years, it's very easy to open, very easy to get in and out. The carrying capacity is really great. You can hold your water bottle, you can hold sunglasses, your daily essentials, plus more. So I think this is a perfect everyday bag and that's the reason why I love it for travel so much because not only is it durable, so I'm not worried about taking out in any weather. I'm not worried about this bag getting damaged by the elements. I also really enjoy the fact that the carrying capacity is large so that you can fit a water bottle. If you're traveling, you know you're gonna probably wanna bring water with you because you're walking around a lot. And also this bag zips, so there is a lot of security and safety with this bag. And then also with my version that I have, the bandolier with the strap, not only is it just, it's just so functional. You can hold it by the handles, you can hold it on your shoulder, you can go cross body. There's so many ways to use this bag and I think it is still, so classic the style is just it's timeless it's classic it's elegant it's just it really makes an outfit and if you don't want the canvas version they have these in all the different types of the empreinte leather and the different canvas patterns you know you can get a different style if you're if you're not into the dami Arabin canvas um, there's just a speedy for everybody and they come in really tiny sizes all the way up to really large sizes. So you can find one that fits your needs and your height, your, what you're looking for, what you want to carry. So I think there's a speedy out there for everybody. So, I mean, I just love the speedy. So I think everyone needs a speedy. Now let's talk about the price point. So when I purchased this bag three years ago, I bought this in Hawaii. Um, and I got it for around $1,400. For those of you who don't know, Hawaii has special prices for Louis Vuitton and also other designer houses with discounts and they have lower sales tax. So if you're planning a trip to Hawaii, I highly recommend doing your research and trying to make your luxury pur purchases there because the only other cheaper place to buy luxury bags are gonna be in Europe. And you know that whenever you are coming back to your home country, you have to declare those items and you might be taxed on those further so traveling within the US, then you will not have to go through customs and declare bags. It's a good tip when you're going to Hawaii, just knowing if you like to buy luxury, that that's a really great place to do it. So that's where I bought this bag. And now, unfortunately, the price has gone up quite a bit where this bag now retails at $1,820. And then even you can go all the way up to like 2,800 if you're wanting something that's a full leather bag. So the price has definitely gone up. Now, would I still buy this bag if I don't, if I didn't have it today at the full price? I think I would just because I use it so often and I think it'd be, it would be worth it in terms of cost per wear. However, I think you should absolutely check out the pre-loved market because I did a quick search before I filmed this video and I saw some that were 
in pretty good condition that were down in like the $1,400 range. Of course, you can get ones that have been worn quite a bit for less, um, but the regular Speedy without the strap um, is $1,400, I think $1,420, something like that. So um, I do think that the strap really makes it worth it. So I would recommend going for the strap version, the bandolier version, than the one without. Um, even though I do tend to carry it a lot top handle, I do really, really like the option of having that strap. Now, overall, I still am absolutely in love with my Speedy, and I would absolutely recommend for anyone who is looking for a great everyday bag, a great bag to travel, a really iconic and classic bag that wears well and is really great for everyday and travel, this is a really, really great option. So check out Pre-Loved, look into the boutique, see which style you like, which pattern you like. The new ones in the Empreinte leather are absolutely gorgeous as well. So you can't go wrong with a classic Speedy. So um, let me know what you think about this bag. Do you have a Speedy? And do you still think that it's relevant and people are buying them today? Leave me a comment down below and stay tuned for some modeling shots. I'll show you how I like to wear this. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and check out my other videos um, on Louis Vuitton bags and also on my Speedy. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.